Hey guys, welcome to another fun episode of uh, Talking Cars. Uh, and today we've got some, well, big news for me. I'm sure it's big news for you as well, Tommy, because uh, BMW just debuted this very instant the brand new 2021 BMW M3 and M4. In other words, the G80 and the G82. What's the difference between the two, Tommy? Well, the M3 is a four door sedan, the M4 is a two door coupe. And these are the sixth generation of the M3 and the second generation of the M4. Yep, and both cars go on sale in March of 2021. Um, And uh, the BMW M3 and M4 get a new competition model, which we'll talk about in this video, along with, of course, uh, performance, technology, pricing. Uh, But the most, well, biggest... And when I say biggest, I mean like uh, like there's no room for anything else in the room. Elephant or gorilla is styling Tommy. Uh, in the debut video that's over at TFL Car, we just uh, basically did a know you're wrong where uh, I said that it looked like an angry beaver. Yes, the the front ends are um, are a little polarizing on these two models, and that's because the iconic kidney grills have now become the size of basically the whole face. So the kidney grill is, of course, the BMW hallmark, these two vertically oriented air inlets positioned next to each other, and they've gotten bigger and bigger and bigger, and now they are just enormous mounted on the front end of both of these cars. Yeah, uh, that's... uh um, you know, when you look at the pictures, uh, there's a lot of styling that went into the new uh, M3, uh, and I just can't get my eyes off that grill, dude. It's it's so huge, and I know that currently that's the latest style. You look at the Lexus spindle grill, it's enormous. You look at, like, the new GMCs, they're enormous. Uh, but, dude, uh, there's just something about this thing that does really look like, especially with the European plate, right, stuck in between. It uh, looks like a beaver. Well, a a perturbed Bieber with a stick. Sit back and relax or keep driving if you're driving. TFL Talking Cars is on the air, the world's most popular car podcast. Okay, maybe not yet, but we're working on it. I'm wondering what it will look like without the front plate. I think it'll look a little cleaner. So, like, if you live in a state, I think Florida, for example, doesn't need a front plate, then you'll have a slightly cleaner look, but it's, it's just, it's not great, Dad. I agree. It's just... I mean, the rest of the car is really well designed, I think, but the front end view, I mean, look at this. It's, it's alarming just how large it is. It almost looks comical. So, not super hot about the grill, but... Well, let's finish about the grill because there, there's some information that BMW has shared about it, and that is that it's a large, frameless kidney grill. Uh, you know, you think of like the old 2002 that had this really elegant, you know, small kidney grill uh, that, you know, is timeless in some ways. I'm not sure this is going to be timeless when you look at it. 20 or 30 or 40 years from now, but BMW says that there is a reason for that. Why? Why do they make it so big? Well, air inlets. Yeah. You know, it, these new engines suck so much air that now you, BMW will tell you they need it for cooling, they need it for uh, turbochargers and for intakes and for uh, radiators. Yeah, but we've talked to enough engineers uh, that have now confirmed that most of the cooling for any modern uh, engine is not from the front, but actually underneath the car. It comes from underneath and then gets sucked in. I mean, the, the grills basically extend underneath the car. So, <laughs> I mean, if this is for cooling, then then they're trying to cool off uh, uh, the Bernese Mountain Dog in the back seat. You know, perhaps, yeah, because these they have to have all sorts of technology, and all sorts of technology requires a lot of energy, and a lot of energy requires bigger everything, and a bigger everything means more heat. So maybe. So, so, so you're saying we're cooling like massive brakes. Uh, yeah, everything. I mean, it's it's uh, it's amazing. Just the not only the performance envelope of these new cars, but the cooling that they require to, you know, cruise down Silicon Valley or Death Valley in in the middle of summer. You know what? This is just going to draw a more distinct line between electric cars and traditional uh, internal combustion engine cars because electric cars, especially if you look at Tesla, don't have grills because they don't need them. Right, uh, and so now this is just going to make it even more prominent. So you'll have like the the grillless and the angry beaver crowd between the two camps of electric versus ice followers. But I think that without the grills, the electric cars look a little funny. I'm not sure they, that they do look funny. I, I agree, it looks kind of goofy. The, the gr- you know, like look, we have a Model Y right now, and I keep looking at the front. And I'm like, it's missing something. It's just this big slab of uh, plastic on the front that does nothing but collect just a boatload of bugs. Yeah, I'm not sure that... Yeah, I, I mean, I'm, I not, mean, I'm not sure that the electric car manufacturers have figured out a way to incorporate like a, like a face into the car without... 
uh, you know, using a grill. I mean, to be fair, you know, ice cars also collect a boatload of bugs, but they're kind of hidden and stuck to the back of the, uh, behind the, the, the front and on the radiator, right? So they're, they're not as prominent, right? But I have spent, you know, a lot of time now, like, debugging the front of both the Model 3 we had, the Model X, and now the Model Y, because... Um, Jeepers, creepers, that thing is like a magnet for bugs. Are the BMW M3 and M4s any bigger, Tommy? Yes, so they're much bigger than the old ones that they replaced, which are called the F80 and F82. They're 1.8 inches longer in wheelbase. They're also 4.6 inches longer overall. A little bit taller, a little bit wider. So, yeah, I mean, they have grown. And, of course, uh, they're based on kind of a new generation of cars. So, for example, the G80 M3 is now based on the latest 3 Series called the G20. Yeah, uh, and they do get uh, something that I'm really jealous of because you know the first time I actually saw it displayed, uh, I was in a um, well, I was in a cave basically in a winery where Audi invited us to, to look at what uh, laser lights can do. And unfortunately, for some unbeknownst reason to me, and we need to do some like research into this, I don't understand why our headlights are always like 20 years behind the newest technology. But the BMW will get laser light headlights when available here in America because right now they're illegal. And you might be wondering, what's a laser light? Are you wondering that? Well, it's a laser. <laughs> it's more than that. Freaking laser. It's a freaking laser. No, no. It's a laser on the shark. No, it's a much more than that. So what a laser can do is you can actually segment the light in such a way that you can create a perfect light, light pattern. So, for instance, you know, when you think about it, you've got the driver light and you've got the passenger headlight, right? You've got two headlights. Right. And when there's an oncoming car, you don't want the driver's side light to be shining as high as you want the passenger t- side light because you'll blind oncoming drivers. So you can create this perfect profile of the headlight so that it illuminates uh, in front of the car but doesn't blind the oncoming traffic, whereas, like, the passenger headlight actually, you know, illuminates not only farther down the road but also the side of the road so you can see, like, potential deer or be- beavers that are about to cross the path. Uh, and it's a really cool tech. Uh, uh, the light is crisp. It's clear. When I saw it demonstrated on the audio, and there's a video of it, by the way, it doesn't do it justice, but if you look for that, uh, you'll see it on TFL Car. Uh, but it is pretty amazing. Uh, uh, and it's a lot better than like those little LED headlights that you buy at the parts store uh, that turn everything blue and blind everything and, and actually reflect so much light back that they also blind the driver. So let's talk about some of the other styling. Was that, was that my rant? Yes. Let's talk about some of the other styling cues on the M3 and M4. Okay. Yeah. They still have the iconic M style mirrors with the little cutout here and the the dual fins, as I'm calling them, the supports for the mirrors. That's cool. Now down the side, really aggressive side skirting. And in the rear, I think, is probably the best angle of the cars because you can see not only the quad exhaust, but... Is there a tail? <laughs> there's, a little, there's a little bit of a spoiler on the back there. And I think the quad exhausts look really good in this generation. They've got kind of a, just a really menacing look to them. Uh, of course, you can see the wider fender flare on the M3 compared to the other uh, standard 3 series. And then LED taillights as well in the rear. So from other angles, the car looks really aggressive it looks really sporty it's just that direct front angle that i'm kind of on the fence well definitely on the fence about yeah but remember uh when uh chris bangle took the lead uh, at bmw design and came out with the bangle butt and everybody hated it uh what about today you know if you look at that generation of five series people actually really like them so maybe it's just ahead of its time Mm, yeah i mean it could be like i think uh i think that was the best looking Right, and it had it had this kind of it had this kind of trunk that that accentuated its derriere, uh, and when people saw it, they were like, "Oh my god, oh my god, it's it's it, it looks like it's got a fat, you know what?" Uh, and now people really appreciate it, and a, a lot of the design language went that way. I also recall uh, that. Uh, uh, when uh, Jeep came out with the latest Cherokee, right, and they took those round headlights and made them into the driving lights, whereas they took those little squinty headlights on top and made them into the main headlights. People hated that, and now Kia is doing the same thing. So, uh, Yeah, but I'm not sure that works so well. I mean, I think that's the thing that they... Uh, so, like, the Bengal 5 Series here, here's a picture of it. It's very curvaceous. It, yeah. it has aged really well. But look at the grill on that thing. It's, it's tiny. I know. I know. Oh, it's a little tiny grill. Yeah, uh, but, you know, so, so I guess I guess I'm going to... Wait for final judgment until I actually see the thing in person. Sometimes pictures don't do it justice, or sometimes, you know, the real thing is more startling in life. I don't know. I, I need I need to get up close and personal with it. All right. So let's talk about performance. Yeah, the the part that of course BMWs, especially the M's, have been known for. So just like um, the 
other M products in the lineup, there are two versions. There's the standard cars, and then there are the competition. And the competition version of the M cars are... So, so wait, there's, there's another level of M now. So it yeah. used to be like there was a standard car, right? Right when we had when I had my old M3, the one I, I rolled into a tree, unfortunately, in the Czech Republic, and almost killed myself in. So I'm, I'm a little bit familiar with with the power of the M3. There was the regular three series, right, and there was like a 318, 325, and then there was the M, and that was always the competition version. But now they've they've cut that bread into so many different slices, right? So we've got the regular BMW, then you got the M Sport, right, which is an M looking. Now you got the M and now there's a there's a there's a model above the M, the competition. Well you also have like the M three forty I as well and you've got M appearance packages. Yeah. So the competition Very confusing. Well the competition is just the top dog. Yeah. That's what you have to remember. So well, but the M wasn't the top dog. Yeah, but now there's a topper dog. So maybe there should be the M M. <laughs> So the, the triple M, the standard M car, the yeah. M3, regular M3, M4, yeah. use an engine called the S58, which is a three-liter inline-six twin turbo that develops 473 horsepower, 406 pound-feet of torque. Uh, you can get, believe it or not, the standard M cars with a six-speed manual transmission. It's sticking around. 50 pounds lighter than the automatic. And BMW says that the regular M3 and M4 will do 0 to 60, regular, quote-unquote, in 4.1 seconds. Now, you've driven that, right? Well, I haven't oh, driven the M3 driven and M4. engine. Yeah, the S58 engine. So what they, they did is they put this engine in the X3 and X4M, the crossovers. And this is the same engine going into the uh, M3 and M4. And it's a cool engine. So it's a twin turbo straight six, uh, twin single scroll turbos. Okay. And then the M340i, for example, also is a three liter straight six, but that's a single twin scroll turbo. So you can get uh, two twin- uh, single scroll or one twin scroll. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep, so the M cars are getting the twin turbo. It's a very good engine, brilliant engine. It's um, it's a little muffled. The exhaust is a little muffled because of the turbochargers, but it's uh, it, it does go like stink. Now, the the pickle is would I get this engine over the AMG engines, which are using you know force inducted V8s now? Mm, that's that's a good question. I have to drive the M3 and M4 to find out. Well, well look, uh, you know, uh, as much as you know, we've been kind of uh, giving BMW some grief for the, the angry Beaver look. Uh, I do have to give them. The opposite, which would be accolades for staying with a straight six. A straight six, in my book at least, is the most uh, refined, kind of the highest uh, in terms of development, pure smoothness, uh, power delivery. You know, any metric you can think of, a straight six is, I think, the best out of all the different configurations, be that an I4, uh, you know, an, uh, a V6, uh, a V8. A straight six is just a wonderful engine. And, and, and for a while there, they almost died. And BMW stuck with it. And one of the cool things about having a straight six, of course, is it's long so that the hood or the nose of the vehicle has to be long. <laughs> and uh, uh, it creates a beautiful uh, kind of silhouette for a car. So uh, it's great that BMW stuck with it. Mercedes, of course, brought it back. Uh, but uh, the question I have for you, Tommy, how fast is the the double M or the M competition, as BMW is calling it? Well, that one's got more horsepower. So yeah. it's got 30 more horsepower, 503. It's got more Torque as well, a lot more torque, over 70 pound feet more torque for a total. Yeah, you'll of, feel that. Yeah, 479. Eight speed automatic only in the competition, but BMW says 0 to 60 in 3.8 seconds. So I think this is a good place where we talk about the competition. Uh, so obviously. Wait, 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 competition? The M3, M4 competition? Or the well, vehicle? this is why it's so confusing. We, the talk about the, we talk about the double M competition. I'm calling it the double M. I think it's cooler. What does double M competition mean? No, no, double M. I'm just calling it. There's the M and well, then Well, you said we're M. talking about the MM competition. The competition to the MM. Competitors? Yeah. yeah. So, like, vehicles that compete with the... Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. See, that, that's why it's so confusing. But if, in my way, you know it's the top dog because it's the MM. And that, then when they come, Then when they come up with... No. The big, it's the triple M. That's horrible. So, All right, so let's talk about the M4 competition competitors. M3 competition competitors as well. So yeah. C-Class. Yes, of course. C63. AMG. AMGs, oh. yep. You've got the Audis as well. But I think the, the RS. Yeah, the interesting, RS4. The interesting competition is the uh, Tesla. 
Yeah, which is actually, if you get the Tesla Model 3 performance, it's actually quicker to 0 to 60. Uh, it's 3.2 seconds. Now all you BMW fans are screaming, like, not around a corner or around a racetrack, and you're probably right about that. Uh, uh, but at a stoplight, the uh, instant torque of electric motors are still going to be quicker than, uh, you know, the, 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 is it a twin scroll or a single scroll straight six now in the competition? I already, I already forgot which which was in which. It's a twin turbo. Yeah, what the scrolls? Just the scrolls. Just forget the scrolls. Just saying, twin turbo, single turbo. This is a twin turbo. <laughs> yeah, it's still gonna be it's still gonna be quicker. Um, yes, but speaking of Tesla, speaking of especially Audi as well, those vehicles are all wheel drive. Yes, this is the cool part. This is the big news. Drum roll, please. Yeah, so the new M3 and M4 launching with rear wheel drive in March, but coming next summer, they're gonna be available with X Drive all wheel drive. So similar to what BMW done with the. M5 as well. Yeah, and I got to drive that, and it's way cool. It's cool technology. Basically, uh, you can switch from either rear-wheel drive or all-wheel drive, and you might be thinking to yourself, why not just buy the rear-wheel drive? Why do you want one that you can switch from? And the reason is it completely changes the character of the car. So when the vehicle's in all-wheel drive, it's more of a refined uh, German uh, sedan. When you switch it to rear-wheel drive and put all that torque and horsepower, it turns it into a, well, American-style muscle car. You can you can do like vroom, 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 you know, like donuts or uh, burnouts all day long and just roast the rear tires off of it, and that is fun. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a really interesting, you know, they have the active M differential, which will distribute torque to the uh, rear wheels. Uh, of course, in all-wheel drive mode, it's a rear-wheel drive by a system, so it's still going to drive like a rear-wheel drive car. Around the track, yeah. Around the track, yeah. I mean, it's just great having these options now. So if you want your pure M3 with rear-wheel drive, of course, that is still the standard car or but, M4, but now you can get them in all-wheel drive, which just opens up the demographic but, to a much pl- larger group of people. Pl- please know what this last bullet point says. Manual selecting, manually selecting two-wheel drive requires a stability control to be turned off. What did I say? It turns it into a German muscle car. Yeah, but that's the same on the M5, too. Right. I'm just, but I'm idea. saying that, that that is... Or you could just get the rear-wheel drive that, one. That is a Hellcat. No, but just get the rear-wheel drive one, and then you automatically but you have... But you don't get, all, all, you don't get 479 pound foot of torque in the rear-wheel drive one. Well, but what I'm saying is the rear-wheel drive one is basically just a poor performance. is a muscle car as well. Uh, I beg to disagree. I like the fact that you can switch between the two. Well, so hang on. Can you get all-wheel drive in the competition? Uh, yes, I think you can. It, it certainly is in the, in the uh, yeah, so M5. The rear, the yeah, so the rear-wheel drive one has the same power. You're not losing any power. We, we will have to clarify that. Yeah, uh, for sure. Yeah, because we're not uh, 100% certain. So if you know, please let us know in the comments below. Uh, are there any uh, chassis improvements? Yeah, so there's... At- a standard adaptive M suspension yep. um, with, uh, you know, you can adjust it for the terrain, that your terrain. You can adjust it for the uh, surface that you're on. There's so you, also you take it off-road? Adjustable, yeah. Adjustable <laughs> wheel slip imitation or limitation uh, functions. Uh, 1.5 inch wider front track for better handling compared to the old ones. And six piston front brakes with single piston floating rear brake calipers. And get this, there's even an optional carbon ceramic package. And if you get the carbon ceramics, you get gold-painted brake calipers. Yeah, so what, what's, the, what's the color of performance for brake calipers? Because each manufacturer seems to have their own uh, color, right? In a lot, it's red. Oftentimes, if you like Brembo's, which always turn orange if you take them to the track. But BMW has gone with gold. Yeah, I like the gold. I think it's pretty you? cool. You like the little gold? I don't like TV. it against this green. I think that's horrible. But the... Uh, the gold is a pretty cool look. I gotta say, I do like the gold. So, and the other cool thing about carbon ceramic brakes, uh, which we learned from our Porsche, uh, is that once you get them, you probably never have to replace them. Or if you do, you're going to break the bank. You know, I looked into it. Our car didn't have them. No, I know I didn't have them. But I'm saying the cars. That's what we avoided them because we couldn't have uh, put on the off-road tires because right. they were so much bigger. But I'm saying if you had them, uh, you, you probably don't have to replace them. They'll last a long Ooh, time. But if you do have to replace them, oh, I it'll, think cost, on the Porsches, it'll cost. It'll mortgage your house. It's like twenty nine thousand. Yeah, mortgage your house. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. All right, let's jump into the interior. We see a bunch of improvements. So similar to the improvements you'd find on the new three and four series. Yep. Uh, new interior materials, new steering wheel, digital gauge cluster. It's a twelve point three inch digital ga- gauge cluster. The info screen, 10.25 inches, Android Android Auto and Apple CarPlay are both standard now. Yeah, no more uh, subscription service. I'm glad that's a subscription service that uh, fell off a cliff. Uh, I'm really getting sick of being nickel and dimed for everything that I want, and it has to be a subscription service. So, yeah, yeah, I don't know why BMW decided to try to make you pay for uh, something you can get free, uh, but it didn't work, uh, and that's a good thing. 
Now, one thing I do like about the interior is the seats. I think the seats look brilliant. Overall, just a, a really cool looking interior. You know, there's that rule, right? The cooler the seat, the less comfortable it is. Well, very hard to pull off a cool looking seat that's very comfortable. Because, look, sporty seats are meant to hold you in place. So that just naturally means that they're going to be uh, a little bit more pokey in places because you, you, know, you don't want to be sliding around when look you're going at around these. the track. Aren't those cool? Look at the coloring. They've got yellow on them and Ooh, blue. And they, got, they got holes for those uh, center-mounted uh, oh, uh, seatbelts so you could you know, get over the shoulders when you're out there on the racetrack. That is just so cool. If you're listening, by the way, check out our YouTube channel, TFL Talk, and you can see but, what we're talking about. But they're basically carbon fiber like buckets is what they look like. Yeah, so, so th- this is one of those things that, that is like uh, uh, just really mystifying because – if you've got seats with the holes in the, behind the shoulder so you can bring the seatbelt through for a four-point or a five-point seatbelt system, that just looks way cool and screams like this is a performance car uh, and says this is a very serious driver's car. And then if you ever tried to actually use those in real life, it is an enormous pain in the ass. Well, yeah, but these just have normal seatbelts. Right, right, right. So, so I'm saying it, it, Yeah, the harnesses are a pain in the butt. Yeah, but yeah. these don't have the harnesses. You just get the look of the harnesses, but you don't have to deal with the mess of trying but to get But if you on. actually put the harnesses in there, if you go to like a track day, they just become a massive pain because then they got this big center button that ends up sticking in your back. If you don't use it, it's, 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 it's a kerfuffle. Uh, what else is new, Tommy, on the interior? Isn't there a new setup button? There is, yeah. So there's all sorts of configurable drive modes. Uh, there's carbon fiber packages, like this one is the blue and the carbon fiber. But yeah, there's uh, road sport, and then there's the M button and track modes as well. There's also an M drive professional, which includes the lap timer in the heads up display and makes it available through the M lap timer app on the phone. I gotta tell you, I get a little, um, I love uh, the fact that there uh, is an M button, which lets you just go to like M mode. Uh, but the Germans have made uh, driving a little bit more complicated than it used to be, right? So now you can go in and personalize a lot of different settings. So you can, for instance, personalize throttle response. You can personalize steering since it's electric. You can you can personalize suspension, right? You can personalize how quickly the vehicle shifts. Uh, and that has, uh, by the way, uh, been really confusing for old guys like me because at some point it's just too many choices. Too many choices. It's like, huh? it's like you know, when you drive up to McDonald's, right? Uh, it's just much easier to say, I want a number nine, which I like. It's two burgers. A fry and a drink. Yeah, but I mean, I don't want to have to go like I want a I want a burger, but make sure it's medium. Don't put on the pickles. I hate the. Fact I mean, that Dad, you've it's got not ketchup on it, and I don't want any uh, uh, pepper. Number nine, just give me that button. Number nine. The car is not going to drive like a cabbage cart if you're not in the right mode. It still is an M car, and now you have those buttons on the steering wheel. Just stick M one or M two. That's number, your number nine. And by the way, I, I love the fact that they did keep a manual transmission, even though I'm kind of bummed that on the cop, the MM, you can only get an automatic. What's up with that? Well, that's going to be why like... Why is that? Why is that? Why can't, why can you get a, 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 you know, a, why can you get a six speed on the regular one, but an eight speed auto on the competition? Okay. Is that just too much torque in the engine? They can't, the, the manual won't handle it? It could be, but there's another reason. It's quicker? Quicker. Shift, shifts faster? And M competition yeah. is more of a track focused car. Yeah. And our race car driver, Paul, yeah. does he prefer manual or automatic? He prefers track? paddle shifters. Yeah, exactly. That The M Competition is automatic only. It's a track car. Yeah. It's got the paddle shifters. Hmm. And look at this. The rubberized or texturized are really cool looking paddle shifters as well. Yeah, so I, I always wondered why, you know, like there's like two kinds, right? There's like the billet aluminum and then there's the plastic ones. And both don't offer a lot of grip. So it's cool that they actually put some kind of like a... Texture a, on them. Uh, yeah, Exactly. Similar driver assistance tech that you'll find on the 3 Series and the 4 Series, so dynamic cruise control, lane departure warning, blind spot detection, and rear crash traffic alert. There's also stop and go control for traffic, lane keep assist, evasion assist are all available, even on the competition model. How about heated seats? Yes, heated seats, Harman Kardon audio, and park distance control come standard. But if you want the heated steering wheel, power trunk lid, gesture control, uh, heads up display, and wireless charging, those are in an executive package. So there's a competition, an executive, a professional. You know, maybe I'm confused for a reason. No, I just think that you uh, have to look at the build and price configurator, and it will all make sense to you. No, 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 it won't. It's not that hard to understand, Dad. There's an M3 and an M4. Then there's the M3 and M4 competition. No, dude. uh, God. 
Uh, like I said, let's go back to that McDonald's analogy. You know, the reason McDonald's sells a billion hamburgers a day or whatever the hell they sell is because you you can just drive up and you can say, I want the number nine or the number five, right? And at one point in time when I was a young lad of your age, a BMW was like a three, a five, or a seven, right? A three Series 5, and, and it made sense. And then the three, if you get the 318i, it was 1.8 liter fuel-injected engine, right? All that has gone out the window, Okay. And yeah. not, now you've got, like, I think last time we checked, there were at least over 20 different variants of BMWs, right? Yeah. Right? So no longer like a 3, 5, and a 7. There's all the X, and there's like the coupe versions of the... Uh, more choice is always good, though. At some point, Three, more, five, cho- at some point more choice just, just leads to paralysis. You know really. that, uh, they uh, still build the 3, 5, and 7. They still make them. You can, you can still right, get right, them. But now that. you also have X2 and And X1 they still make the hamburger. You can still get it. Yeah. But and you can still get it without ketchup and without, you know. Let's, let's talk about those en- engine nomenclature. But I'm just saying from, from, from like a manufacturer standpoint of view, right, I think uh, – that the Japanese nailed it when they had like three different levels of vehicle, right? There was like the the the, the, the entry level, right? The the medium one, and then the, and then the premium one. So, and usually studies have shown that if you give people like three choices, like like cheap, affordable, cheap, medium, and expensive, they always go for the middle one uh, because that's the way human nature is. I think what's happened with the Germans now because of their um, very competitive nature, right? So the Germans benchmark each other, and what I mean by the Germans, I mean the luxury brands, BMW, Mercedes, and Audi. Uh, and so there's no segment that doesn't, doesn't go unfilled. Right. right. There's a lot of there's, there are many many crossovers that should probably not exist. I agree, but I don't think that more choice is a is a bad thing. So, for example, Mini has gone to that. I think that, too much choice can can be. Not, I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I think it it hurts you in sales terms. Mini went away from that thing. So they used to have all the choices. And yes, now but that was, that's a different. So, but so, now there's three. There's the, the standard, the middle, and the high. And now everyone's all grumpy. Okay, I, I'll give you. I, but I'll give you that. But Mini has always been at least under BMW control, right, uh, the kind of the boutique uh, brand, right? They, they don't sell a lot of cars, at least not not in terms of, like, you know, the amount that, like, Toyota Ford or Honda sells, right? Uh, and so it's always been the, the kind of brand that you you have as a second or third car and, you know, you, you, you want to custom design that car to meet your exact taste. It's a very lifestyle-oriented car. Uh, but, but BMW's entire brand now has become lifestyle. But even so, let's go back to those numbers on the back of the car. Right. Because I was doing a video with our E33 series yeah. talking about how it's much more simple. So back in the day, 318i, used to, I thought, used to mean 3 series, 1.8 liter injected. Yes. And a lot of the times it did. Yes, most of the time it did. Yeah, but sometimes it didn't. But most like of the time it did. Like a 325e was a 3 series with a 2.7 liter fuel injected engine. Yeah, that was like the economy version. Yeah, but it was it was it should have been a 327e, but they called it a 325. I mean, there were there were cases back See, in the day. Even, even way where, back in the day they started straying from the so from I don't, the path. I really I don't think it matters. I like I like having the options because it means that you can go more affordable if you want. You can go more expensive if you want. Because so, so, every car that was a so, M3 so, competition so, with so, the executive so, package, so, every car would be $80,000. So, so can I make another argument? Yes. All right. So how are cars bought and sold in America? What do you mean? Who, how are they, who buys the cars? Think oh, the them. dealers buy the exactly. cars. Exactly. So dealers, people don't buy the car, right? So, so what percentage of people actually do you think go in and then configure their car? I think it's very tiny. I think it's less than – I bet you if – I don't know this number, but I would you know, be willing to bet that it's less than 10%. I'm sure it's small. And, and so what will a dealer do when it comes to the new M3? You think that they'll like get the – okay, let's talk about pricing. So let, let's talk – and then we'll talk about what the dealer will do. So how much, this, how much does a, an M3 – Non competition start. Uh, so Inclu- starts at, includes destination. Yeah, seventy thousand eight ninety five. The competition starts at seventy three seven ninety five. So three thousand more. Yeah, and then the M four starts at seventy two seven ninety five. The competition starts at seventy five six ninety five. Okay, and uh, when is it available? March twenty one. The all wheel drive is not available yet. We have no pricing on the all wheel drive. So what a dealer will do, of course, right? Because they make more money on the more expensive vehicles. Is they will they will order all their M threes and M fours with every option, the executive option, the professional option, right? But that wouldn't change if they had three packages. They would just still order the most expensive. But, but 
What I'm saying, they, they no, I'm, I'm saying the, the more options you give the dealer, the more boxes they will check. And so uh, if you want the car and if you want the car in a timely manner, you're not going to find that $71,000 car out there. There's no way you're going to find that car, at least not in the first year or two of production. Also, right? it's going to, I mean, realistically, Tommy, how much do you think it's going to cost for a 2021? So it starts at seventy eight ninety five. But if you go to your dealer in March when this is available, how much do you think you'll pay for that? Well, probably car? 80 At least. Yeah. Yeah. But that's, I mean, the solution to that then is you go to them and you order one. You get exactly the spec you want and the exact yeah, color. Yeah, but it, but, but And then you wait a couple okay. months and the car will show up and you've got the perfect yeah, car. I, 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 once again, it doesn't work that way because Jim. It can work no, that It way. doesn't work that way because Jim, the salesman, and, and Dan or Jerry or Janine, the sales manager, have three of them sitting out on the lot. And you come in there and you say, I want to order the uh, seven the thousand eight hundred ninety five dollar. They will do everything in their power, right? Including, you know, some mathematic m- magic to get you into the car that's sitting on the lot. Well right? then my solution to that? And then like, all right, I'm going to go to the other dealership, which is in one town over. And they'll do the same thing. Or or I wouldn't put it past some dealerships to actually, let's be generous here, you know, fudge what cars are available and how long it'll take to, to get that car, right? We actually, went, we actually went through that process recently with our, uh, with our uh, 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 Defender. Right, but it worked. We're fine. I mean, we, we, we ordered it in June, <laughs> but it's it's it's. But the car we want is coming. We you hope. Just, you wait three months; it'll be here in ten and days. And then what happened? The what what ha- what happened? What do you mean? The car we wanted is coming. What just happened? What what email did well, I just get? Well, one of the option package wasn't being produced, so we don't have the sticker on the hood of the. So, so what, what was my option? You, you what, was, what was the option? That, 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 send it to the dealer or wait no, to have them. Right. They said they, – here's, here's, Wait indefinitely here's, exactly. to, to get the yeah. – yeah. But here, that, here. it doesn't matter because you still have the great one. indefinitely. So let's re- – re- 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 No, re- hang re- on. Highlight that word indefinitely. Let's talk about the Defender. To, to get the car I wanted. Originally. Let's talk about the Defender. All right. If you wanted a Defender yes. right now, all the cars on the lot were 80 grand. Every yes. single one. Yes. You didn't want the 80 grand one. No, so because you, I wanted the off-roader. So you ordered one. Right. And it's coming. Because, because I didn't, like, it's a good analogy. I didnn't want the $85,000. Exactly. Right. And you ordered it and it's fine. But so, so what happened with us, and I don't want to be, I'm, I, I don't want to be so, um, I just want to be honest about this and transparent, right? What happened with us was I got an email, which I appreciate from Land Rover, saying uh, one of the packages, a $1,700 appearance package that you wanted, which is in a way very important to us because, look, we look at our cars as movie stars, right? Uh, and so while what's under the hood is important in a performance, what you see on the screen when we shoot the cars is what the thing looks like. So in a way, it's, it's weird, but the appearance of the car is very important, right? And I wanted it to look cool. And they said the appearance package you wanted is back-ordered, not available. Uh, so you can either ship it the way it is without the appearance package, which is, by the way, like a weird thing that they install not at the factory but at the at port. The port yeah. Or you can wait indefinitely until it becomes available. And, of course, you know, the, given the choice to what are we going to do, you know, we don't want to be having a car that, that's sitting at the port where we can't film it and we can't review it. So we said – but once again, it, it put me in this position where I wanted the exact car I wanted, but I couldn't get the exact but, car but I wanted. And most people, I think, when they go to the dealership and are faced with that option or that potential, that option, which will be in the back of their head, will end up buying the more expensive cars and working into a lease, right, or working it into a uh, payment plan, right? That's what's going to happen. There's, there's no Defender that has an appearance package. Even if you went to the dealer and bought an $80,000 one, it wouldn't have it. It wouldn't have it because it's it's actually, ordered. It, it's back ordered. Actually, actually, the one Steve got has it. He's got the big sticker on the hood. That's but what we want. That was that, that was sticker. that was part of the first edition. That was not part of the appearance package. That but was the first the, edition that, thing. Right. So they didn't have it in, in the package. But I, I guess all I'm saying is is uh, and by waiting, by the way, we're saving twenty thousand dollars. We should explain because you couldn't find the car that we wanted at the price we wanted. Well, I, I don't know about that because I, you know, Defenders. We don't know what the depreciation is on them, but I, I, you know, no, if, but if I it's mean, landover depreciation, we probably every could've. other Defender was eighty grand. The one we ordered was sixty. At this point, we probably could have bought a used one and not, you know, save some money as well. Well, you wouldn't have gotten the color or the options you wanted. So, I mean, I think that's the solution. Just order your new M3 and and be a little patient and wait for the one you want. Well, I think we uh, we'll, we'll beg to disagree on that. Uh, but that's what makes this podcast fun. You know, we, we kind of uh, don't agree on everything. Uh, and let us know in the comments below. Uh, do you like being able to custom order a car and having to, you know, potentially wait for it? Or do you just like going to the dealer uh, and ordering it the way it is? So let's get back to the uh, M3. Um, you know, the M3 has been, uh, I would say, the affordable dream car for a lot of people, right? Let's face it, most of us don't have. Uh, 
oh, I don't know, McLaren or Ferrari or Lamborghini money unless, you know, we run uh, a YouTube channel that <laughs> that we like to call uh, Stupid Rich. Uh, but uh, an M3 is one of those kind of cars that, that offers uh, performance that is close to, you know, those vehicles. It also offers practicality where you could, like, put your family into it, right, because it's either a sedan or, or in the case of the M4, a two-door coupe. Uh, and so it's it's always been kind of the sweet spot for uh, car guys and car gals because it, it combines all these really cool features into a car that can be driven every day. I would wager this is no longer the affordable dream car. Why, why do you say because that? Because it's $71,000. I don't think that's even remotely so, attainable for most people out there. All right, so if that's the definition of what I think is the magic sauce of a of a BMW M3, what car is now filling that gap? Tesla. You think the Model 3 is filling it's that over, gap? It's $10,000 cheaper. Yeah. Well, actually, probably for the performance. How much are the performance? They're like 60 Yeah. So ten grand cheaper, and it's quicker. Yeah. yeah, so I think they kind of need to reevaluate the pricing strategy. So, so usually what a manufacturer does is they, put, they slot a car in underneath there. Now, this one's actually bigger, so now we're looking at an M3 that's the size of an old M5. So maybe the M2 is now the one. Yeah, the I one. think that's true, although it's two doors, so it's kind of another thing. But, yeah, I think that's more of the affordable dream. Because, uh, you know, they, they, because they do like to slot cars underneath. Well, let us know what you guys think in the comment section below of the new M3 and M4. Yeah, and, and, and you know, obviously the, the, the gorilla in the room or the beaver in the room is, is a huge open uh, grill of the thing. Do you think the BMW is a trendsetter or uh, have they gone one step too far? Yep, and check out tiplecar.com for the latest and greatest in new car reviews. And thanks for uh, watching. Uh, and uh, if you're listening to this uh, on uh, our podcast and you want to see pictures of this vehicle, uh, just head on over to TFL Talk on YouTube. And if you like Tommy's T-shirt, uh, you can click on the link below on the YouTube uh, video and actually get one for yourself and help support the team. All right, Tommy, another fun podcast. Uh, really enjoyed it. Yep, see you next time. Ciao.